Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about feeling lost. Feeling lost is a common problem amongst people. The reason is because most of us are taught to ignore our internal guidance system. And what is our internal guidance system? It's our feelings and our emotions. Think of your emotions and your feelings like a compass or a navigation system that are guiding you through life. This compass is basically showing you what's right for you, what's wrong for you, what you like, what you don't like, your true desires, the truth of you. If you ignore your internal guidance system, it's a bit like walking into uncharted territory without a compass. Your mind will never tell you what is true for you, only your feelings can tell you that. So if you're disconnected from your own feelings and emotions, you are disconnected from the truth of you. This means you will feel unknown, like a stranger to yourself. When I say the truth of you, what I mean are things like what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy, what resonates with you, what you're thinking, what you believe, and most of all, what you really want, need, and desire. These are the only real accurate measure of who you are. Now pretend you decided to ignore your internal guidance system over 20 years ago when you were small. How far off track do you think you could get in those 20 years? potentially so far off track that you would have to numb out to or tune out your emotional guidance system entirely to keep on walking. Perhaps you've gone so far astray that now all you feel is numbness. It's almost like you're driving in your car and your navigation system tells you that you've missed the exit. So you have to turn down the volume on the navigation system in order to keep driving because it's irritating you because it keeps saying Look, we're off track. Look, we're off track. And it gets louder and louder the more off track you get. You haven't been listening to yourself. Potentially you've been listening to your parents, or you've been listening to friends, or you've been listening to society at large. The bottom line is you have been listening to something other than your internal navigation system. Something other than your feelings and emotions. It's like taking duct tape and taping over the top of your compass and turning the volume down on the navigation system. You will experience this perpetual ignoring of your emotions as a deadening or a numbing sensation. The good news is, your compass never stops pointing north. Your navigation system never stops talking to you no matter how far down the volume is or how much duct tape you think you've used. So all you have to do to get unlost is to tune back into your feelings and emotions. Begin to listen to them and not your thoughts and be very honest with yourself, even at the risk of hurting other people about your own personal truth. Most of us were raised in a punishment and reward parenting setting. This means when we were children we learned that the only way we could get love was to be good. We want to be good people so badly that we forsake our own truth, our desires and true personality, to make other people happy. We think that this is what makes us good. Really it just makes us lost. If you are lost, you have cared, or still do care, much more about the way other people feel than the way that you feel. Because of this, you are going to be surrounded by people who don't actually resonate with you. People who would reject you if they knew the truth of who you really are, or so you think. You will feel fundamentally flawed. You know on some level that you're surrounded by people who are nothing like you. So you begin not only to feel lost, you begin to also feel alone. What you don't know is that if you would allow yourself to tune back into your own emotional guidance system and to prioritize yourself and your personal truth above everything else, you would begin to attract people into your life that do resonate with you, who would completely approve of the truth of who you are. Anyone who is lost suffers from a deeply suppressed story of self-rejection. And when we are in a space of self-rejection, we can only attract people who reject the truth of who we are. This means if we're gay, we will be surrounded by religious fundamentalists who hate gays. This means if we're afraid of intimacy, we will attract all kinds of people who need us and pull at us for intimacy. 
This means if we crave intimacy, we will attract all kinds of people who are independent and who don't want to give their time and energy to us. This means if you're an artist, you'll be surrounded by people who are practical 9-to-5 workers who constantly put down irrational and practical, irresponsible people who think it's smart to follow their heart. You get the point. But the sad part is, because of this rejection that we feel from the people around us, which ultimately stems from our own rejection of our truth as children, in order to fit into the world we were raised in, we begin to feel as if there is something fundamentally wrong with us. If we are out of touch with the way we feel and disconnected from our own truth, pretty soon we cannot figure out what we like and don't like. We cannot figure out why we are doing what we're doing or how we ended up where we ended up. It's as if we just let ourselves float on a tide and drifted here to wherever this is. Emotionally, this will literally feel as if you are drifting or if you have drifted somewhere. That drifting feeling, along with numbness, is the hallmark emotion of being lost. So here are ten suggestions which will help you go from lost to found. The first is, tune into and express your emotions. This is the most crucial step. To begin accessing your emotions, you want to start with the body. When you have numbed out to your emotions, your body is your link back to them. So throughout the day, I want you to do a body scan. For those of you who are particularly out of touch, you can set your timer to go off at random intervals and do a body scan each time that timer goes off. To do a body scan, you want to close your eyes and start with your head and just go observe what's going on inside of your body, starting from your head going all the way down to your feet. Describe the sensations you feel in your body. Perhaps you might want to keep a list of emotions. And when you feel that sensation, look at your list of emotions and see if you can identify which emotion it is which is taking place within your body. This will help you to identify how you feel. You might want to record your results in a feeling log or feeling journal. Another very great thing to do if you've tuned out to your emotions and you need to express your emotions and feel them is to learn how to express emotions. I actually did a video on this a while ago called How to Express Emotion. Make sure that anytime you feel your emotions, you are realizing that your emotions have something valuable to say, so let them tell their story. The second tip is to discover your feelings of inspiration and of passion. The feeling of inspiration and the feeling of passion is the opposite of being lost. Most of us do not do things in our day-to-day -day life, especially in our work life, that truly make us passionate. We get too busy for passion. We lie to ourselves and say that bills are more important than how we feel, or that a goal that we have is more important than how we currently feel. We allow our minds and the damaging beliefs that our minds are run by to rule over the way we truly feel. This means that illusion will be running your life, not truth. Dare to admit to what you feel passionate about. And if you think you need money first to do what you're passionate about, you are listening to your mind, which is currently lying to you. Because abundance will only flow to you as a result of you being in alignment. And you are only in alignment when you're feeling passion and joy. If you don't know what it is that you're truly passionate about, it's time to start trying things that are new. Try anything that catches your fancy. There's no right or wrong answer to how to do this. Sign up for that pottery class you've always wanted. Buy that paint set. Buy that book on accounting. Go in the direction of anything that might moderately interest you and pay attention to the way you feel while you're doing them. If you feel positive, continue doing those things. If you feel negative, discontinue doing those things. There's no risk in trying something new. And every time you try something new, you will be closer to understanding the truth of who you are and what you truly enjoy you'll be that much closer to your passion. You don't have to stick with anything. Trust me, if you truly enjoy something, you will not have to force yourself to stick with it. Because it will feel bad not to do that thing. Because the motivation will come intrinsically instead of extrinsically. Your purpose will only be known to you once you can access the emotional feel of your particular passion. And people who feel lost are disconnected from passion, therefore disconnected from purpose, therefore disconnected from a deep level of meaning in their lives. Tip number three, ask yourself why you are doing things. Personal inquiry should start and never stop if you feel lost. 
The more self-awareness you have, the less you will feel lost. And make sure you solicit help for this one as well. Psychologists, social workers, spiritual guides, life coaches, they're all adept at helping you gain self-awareness. Tip number four, gravitate towards social interaction with people who make you feel good when you're around them, towards people whom with you feel a deep level of connection and interpersonal intimacy with. If our social lives are organized around sports or hobbies, or work or the internet, we lack the vital interpersonal support that is necessary for our emotional health. If your social interactions are limited to people who share the same sport or hobby or job, your conversations will most likely be limited to the very pastime you both share and nothing more. The sport or hobby or career will be your only point of relation. Your relationship will therefore lack intimacy. No one will be let into your internal world. And because of this, no one will love you for more than what you do. Beware that family may not be the people who provide this sense of deep internal connection either. We cannot form the vital interpersonal connections we need to live a happy life until we allow ourselves to prioritize and seek out people whom we feel deeply connected to. This will make you feel an intense sense of isolation, no matter how many people you are physically around. That internal sense of personality isolation leads to the feeling of being lost. Believe me when I tell you that a big part of feeling lost is to be fundamentally untethered to other people. Quit distracting yourself from yourself. Distraction abounds in today's world. We can use it to distract ourselves from our own personal truth. We use it so as to not have to be present with ourselves. We try to escape the painful feelings of having gone off course somewhere by tuning it out with porn addictions, focusing on other people's problems, setting goals, spending hours on Facebook, and becoming too busy. In fact, busyness is the number one mode of distraction for people who feel lost. To not be busy is to have to be with yourself, and being with yourself and being alone are two radically different things. If you are ready to be with yourself, all your bells and whistles will most likely be going off. It will feel either like chaos or like a depressed emptiness when you are really with yourself because your internal guidance system will be telling you, we're off course. People who feel lost have a basic unwillingness to admit to where they are. That's why those of us who are lost are so good at saying things like, no, I'm totally great, I love my life, when that is not true. We don't want to admit to the truth that we feel lost. We don't want to admit to the truth that we feel as if we've gone off course and made some kind of big life mistake. We don't want to admit to the fact that we're not happy. Because that's seen as a loss of success, and a loss of success is seen as being worthless. Self-denial might have been your particular mode of coping tool when you were trying to deal with fitting into a family who you did not resonate with. When you were trying to fit into a family where you couldn't maintain your own personal truth. But let me tell you, self-denial is no kind of virtue. The only way that you can find out where you want to go and how to get there from where you are is to admit to where you currently are. Even if where you are sucks. What in your life serves as a distraction from yourself? Tip number six. Invite meaning into your life. If you feel lost, your life is absent of meaning. So study other people's philosophies and ideas about the meaning of life. Try them on for size. See if any of them fit. Begin to question yourself about the meaning of life in general and the meaning of your life. What are you believing about the meaning of life right now? Does this particular belief system feel good to you or bad to you? If it feels bad, do you care more about your supposed truth or hunch? which you can't actually prove or disprove because no one can, then feeling good? It is true that becoming attached to a belief system to the degree that you are unwilling to question it is harmful to your well-being, but forming a belief system that feels good to you personally is a crucial part of living a meaningful and happy life. Ultimately, it is up to you whether you assign an empowering or a disempowering meaning to the circumstances and events of your life. This is the reason why so many people who feel lost join up with religious groups and feel so good afterwards. 
It's because those religious philosophies offer meaning to their lives. And when you have some kind of meaning, you have a foundation to anchor yourself to life with. That's the opposite of being lost. But rather than go join some kind of religious institution, my suggestion would be to create your own personal religion based off of the truths which you have collected from all kinds of ideas that surround you. You are the one that is meant to create your own personal religion out of the things which work for you individually. Tip number seven. Do not be afraid of losing yourself. Nothing has gone wrong. It's a spiritual truth that you can't even find yourself unless you lose yourself. When you look at feeling or being lost in this way, like it's a turning point to find out who you are and what you really want to do, the better off you'll be. And you are closer to truly knowing yourself than most people who think they are not lost but are. If you know you're lost, you know where you are. You're lost. This means that you know that your mission in life is to find yourself. And when you start looking for yourself, you will find yourself. Everything you do can add to your knowledge of yourself and your personal truth, if you pay attention to and inquire into your reactions and feelings. Is it possible to go astray? No. Think about it this way. If your intention for this life was to find yourself, then you have to become lost. Therefore, when you become lost, is it a mistake? Is it not part of the plan? No. It's part of the plan. It's a necessity on a spiritual level, on a personal growth level, for you to have become lost. Because that is the only way you are going to find yourself and gain that kind of expansion. That means something has gone right. Tip number eight. Stop being cerebral about what's going to bring you happiness. Most of us have a concept of what we think is going to make us happy. This is not having access to what makes you happy. This is believing your mental stories. And your mind is never accurate about what will actually make you happy. Goal setters are the worst when it comes to this. Those of us who are goal setters have the idea that our happiness is somewhere in the future with some goal we've set. So we tend to sacrifice our current happiness for the sake of potential future happiness. We think happiness means winning that gold medal, or making that amount of money, or moving to that place, or marrying that person. We externalize happiness by doing this. We have no idea if those things will make us happier. We only think they will. We can only know what makes us happy in the moment by listening to and following our positive feeling emotions in the moment. So take one day at a time. Quit worrying about your purpose. Quit worrying about things that are out there in the future and start dealing with each individual day as it comes. Are you currently trying to convince yourself that achieving something in the future is what's going to make you happy? If so, you have cerebralized your happiness and you are currently sacrificing your current happiness for the potential and the promise of future happiness. Number nine, quit living cautiously. This life was not meant to be lived carefully. Letting self-doubt dictate your life is a surefire way to get lost. Now you may not identify yourself as a cautious person, but if you're lost, you are. You may not be cautious with finances, but you may be cautious with your heart and falling in love. You may not be cautious about getting close to people, but you're cautious to try new things in your professional life. Cowardice prevents us from following our passions. Cowardice prevents us from finding ourselves and really being happy long term. We need to look our fear directly in the face. We need to examine it and understand it fully. The more we understand it, the less we fear what we currently fear and the easier it is to make self-loving decisions that are not dictated by fear. You will begin to do what is right for you personally, and that is to find yourself. Tip number 10. It's time for a realistic game plan. So get out a piece of paper, and on the top I want you to title this, Finding Myself, and itemize 10 things you could do which would help you to find yourself. And then what I want you to do is to pick the top three things that you circle from that list and follow through with them. Your list might look like this. Keep an everyday feelings log. Buy paints and start painting. 
Say yes to going on a date with fill in the blank. Open up to a friend who I trust about fill in the blank. Read the book Man's Search for Meaning. Watch YouTube videos about how to feel emotion and express emotion. Read articles about feeling lost. Start seeing a psychologist. Every day, one time a day, prioritize something that makes me feel good right here and now over a future goal that I've set for myself. Express my emotions every morning by waking up and writing down how I feel, even if it is incoherent and disorganized. If you take these items seriously and act upon them, you will begin to regain your position in the scheme of life, and you will feel less lost. If you are currently lost, the direction and the position of your life is not clear. That means that the truth of your life is pretty dark, which is why it's important to remember some of my favorite sayings. It's always darkest before the dawn, and you can only see the light of the stars in the darkness of night. If you are no longer in resistance to where you are, which is lost, then you will begin to allow yourself to be found the people and places and things and information that will aid to you getting back on track with the truth of who you really are will begin to float into your experience. And pretty soon, you will find that you have gone from lost to found. Have a good week.